Hi everyone, long time no see, and welcome back to the Focus Attack Tech Corner. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since we've been gone for so long, I'm here today to show off one of our biggest announcements in recent memory, the start of a series of hitbox conversion panels for commercial arcade sticks. Today we'll be going over the hitbox conversion panel for the Hori Wrap N. This conversion kit consists of multiple parts, with the most important part arguably being the new FA SOCD, or Simultaneous Opposite Cardinal Direction Cleaner PCB. It is also accompanied by the FA SOCD hitbox harness, and a pass-through harness fashioned for a solder-free and hassle-free experience. The hitbox panel itself has been created by our friends at All Fight Sticks, and is a direct replacement panel for the original lever-based wrap-in panel. We are already accepting artwork and plexi submissions for this new panel, so you can buy without worry and not be stuck with an incomplete project. In addition to this, we are offering discounted bundles on our store at a competitive price. We should talk about the tools you will need to get this job done painlessly. There aren't many, but you should always have the right tool for the job. The first one is your standard combination Phillips and flathead screwdriver. If you plan to remove the lever from the old panel and reuse it elsewhere, I highly recommend keeping one of these around. The second one is an electronic size screwdriver kit. I use a number zero size Phillips head screwdriver from my kit to remove the small screws from the wrap ends bottom panel. Finally, you will need a 3mm hex or allen key for removing the screws that keep the top panel of the wrap end in place. Let's begin the project by turning over the wrap end. You are going to want to start from the underside of the arcade stick because all of the wiring is still connected internally. There are 8 Phillips head screws that keep the bottom panel fastened to the case, as I will show you here. Before you can go any further, all 8 of these screws need to be removed. There is no need to remove the screws holding the feet in, so don't worry about those. When you're done, you can remove the bottom plate and set it and the screws aside, exposing the wiring. The next thing you will need to do is unplug the 5-pin harness from the lever. Whether or not you plan to keep the lever attached to the original panel, this has to come unplugged. Just wiggle it loose and it will come free. Tuck it aside for the time being preferably in a place where it can't get damaged. If you are planning to remove the lever, you'll need to use your flathead side of your combination screwdriver to keep the shaft in place so that you can remove the ball top handle. You can see the key at the bottom of the shaft where the screwdriver should be held in place. You will have to use your free hand to twist the ball top handle counterclockwise while your screwdriver hand keeps the lever's shaft from rotating freely. This is a bit of a balancing act to do here on camera for everyone to see, but it should be easier for those of you doing this at home. Just take your time and go slow. Once the ball top handle is loose, twist it off the rest of the way and remove it along with the shaft cover and dust washer. Next you will need the Phillips head side of your combination screwdriver as you will be removing the four screws that keep the lever fastened to the panel. Like everything else, these can be loosened by turning the screwdriver counterclockwise. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. I recommend putting these screws back in the thread holes of the panel once the lever is removed, as it makes them a lot harder to lose down the line. Replacing lost screws is never a fun time. Set the lever aside once it's been removed. Let's take a look at our button wiring. You might notice the ribbon that runs over the buttons. This is for the wrap ends touch pad. Ribbon cables can be frail, so be careful around it. I highly recommend taking a photo of your wiring before making any changes, as it makes it much easier to revert changes made in the event of an incident. You may notice that I am missing my last two buttons, and this is because I use a 6 button layout. For your reference, the missing 4th punch button has two red wires, 
and the missing fourth kick button has two black wires. All push button wiring needs to be unplugged from the buttons for this conversion, except for the options button, unless you're installing art in it. In my case, I'm removing art, so I'm unplugging everything. Carefully wiggle each connector loose. You don't want to break any, and while they are resilient, they can break with force, so take your time. Push the wires aside once you are finished unplugging everything, and then flip the arcade stick back over. We're making good headway! It's time to get out your 3mm hex key, because we can now safely remove the top panel. There are 6 screws that must be removed to release the top panel from the stick shell, and I'll point them out to you here. Removing them is like removing any other screw counterclockwise to loosen them, and then keep turning to remove them all together. We will need these screws again, so put them somewhere safe. Once all the screws are removed, you can simply lift the control panel off of the stick housing. If you're like me and chose the Shioken star layout, and are reusing buttons, you will need to flip the panel over for button removal. That said, let's push the stick housing aside for now. If you're like me, you are probably already ready with your buttercade snap out tool. This is a handy, arguably must have tool, that makes removing push buttons a breeze. This is the 30mm variant and we do sell these on the store. It's not necessary to have it, but it sure makes life a lot easier. If you're using the snap out, seat the bottom half of the snap out around the button with the cut side facing away from the button tabs, and use the upper half of the snap out to push the button out of the panel, like so. Repeat the process for however many buttons you have that need to be removed. Set your buttons aside if you intend to reuse them, else go ahead and file them away. Now we're getting to the good part. Bringing the stick housing back to front and center, it's time to install the new hitbox panel. This is pretty self-explanatory. Install the hitbox panel where the original panel once was. It should line up with minimal effort and be a perfect fit. If you have an art print and plexi cut to install as well, now would be the time to do so before going any further. Start with layering on the art print first. After that, you will want to add your plexi cut. Line them up to the best of your ability. You'll get a chance to get the alignment perfect as you work the 3mm hex screws back in. The hex screws are reinstalled in the opposite way that they were removed, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Be sure to seat the screw properly before threading it back in to avoid cross-threading and damaged threads. Remember, there are 6 screws total that need to be accounted for. Hopefully you've kept them somewhere safe and easily accessible. Don't use your hex wrench until you have finger tightened the screws most of the way, once again to ensure that you aren't cross threading them. Once the screws are all finger tightened, tighten them the rest of the way with the hex wrench while keeping your art and plexi aligned. A little oomph ought to do it, but don't get carried away. 5 to 7 pounds of force is more than sufficient. If you made it this far, well done! We're just under halfway finished. Take a quick break to marvel at your progress. We're going to take a quick detour to talk about installing art in translucent push buttons. If you don't intend to install any art in your buttons, you can go ahead and skip forward to installing them. You can remove the plunger of a Sanwa push button by pushing in the small ears that are resting in the slots of the push button barrel. 
I prefer to use a small flathead screwdriver to push in and up to work them loose. Usually once one side is free of the slot, you can just lift the base of the plunger all together and it will come out. With the plunger free, you can see that there is a removable cap at the top of the plunger. This is what we are after. You need to slip the edge of your fingernail underneath the cap seam and pry upwards to work the cap loose. This will leave you with the plunger skeleton and the cap itself, which has a solid insert inside of it. Setting the skeleton aside, turn your attention to the cap. You merely have to turn the cap over so that the insert falls out of it. See how it is flat on one side and keyed on the other? The key side must always face down out of the cap as it locks into the skeleton. Your art will go on the solid side of the cap. Remember that the ears of the plunger are turned 90 degrees from the ears of the button barrel, so use that as a reference to how to position your art for easier alignment. Once it's correct or close, take the clear art cap and reinstall it on the plunger. It takes a tiny bit of force to lock it back on, and you should hear a click. But wait, there is a dimple on the side of the clear art cap, and you should spin the cap along with the plunger until it seats in one of the many recessions of the plunger, otherwise it won't be level. You will need to do this with all of your push buttons, and check each one closely. Once you've done that, you can reinstall the plunger into the push button barrel by squeezing the small ears as you work it back into the barrel slot. Once you seat it, give it a few good clicks to make sure that it's working properly. Once you have prepared your buttons, it's time to install all of them. Seat them all firmly into the control panel, like so. If you have art in your plunger caps, take note of the button's alignment before installing it into the panel, else you may have to rotate them afterwards to get the proper alignment for your art. This is one of the less involved steps of the process if you aren't using button art. You can simply just install and go. All done, with this part at least. Give your buttons a couple good presses to make sure that everything is seated and working as it should be. Hanging in there? We're a little over halfway through the build now. I know that this is somewhat time consuming, but it's best to do a job right the first time, and be thorough. We're going to move on to installing wiring now, so go ahead and flip the wrap in over once more. There's quite a bit going on here, and there's more coming, so try to follow along carefully. The first thing that we are going to do is reconnect all of the action buttons, for your punches and kicks specifically. This is where the photo you took of your original wiring comes in handy, as it's still applicable here. For the sake of being thorough, I'll show it in great detail as we move forward. Starting from the top right, working our way left, connect the blue wires to the first punch button. After that, you will need to connect the purple wires to the second punch button. Then, you will need the pair of gray wires as they will be connected to the third punch button. The final pair for the top row will be the red wires. Go ahead and connect them to the fourth and final punch button. Moving on, from right to left on the bottom row, we'll connect the kick buttons. Take the orange pair of wires and connect it to the first kick button. Your second pair of wires will be the yellow set. Connect them to the second kick button.
The next pair of wires will be the green ones. Connect them to kick button number 3. The final pair will be the black wires. Connect them to kick button number 4. If you removed your options button to install or remove art, reconnect it now using the pair of white wires. To review, options is white, punch 4 is red, punch 3 is gray, punch 2 is purple, punch 1 is blue, kick 4 is black, kick 3 is green, kick 2 is yellow, and kick 1 is orange. If possible, gently slide the cable tie keeping the wires and ribbon tied together down the loom a bit so that you can pull all the wires behind the post next to the bottom most button. It will keep things out of your way for the next step. If you want to do any sort of light wire management, now would be the time. We will now install the wiring for your directional movement buttons. We are wiring four buttons for a total of eight wires using the provided SOCD hitbox harness. Much like the last section, I'll be calling out the individual wire colors to keep things organized. Go ahead and unravel the harness and get ready to connect the wires. We'll be starting with the rightmost button. Connect the yellow wire to button 1. Next, connect the red wire to button 2. You will then connect the green wire to button 3. Finally, we will wrap our signal wires by connecting the orange wire to button 4, the bottommost button. To review once more, button 1 is yellow, button 2 is red, button 3 is green, and button 4 is orange. Keeping your harness as neat as possible, take the daisy chain black wire portion of it and connect all remaining terminals together, taking note of how the daisy chain is organized by distance between connections for basic wire management. Once all of these are connected, your button wiring on the button side is complete and we can move on. You might be wondering what to do with the other end. Don't worry, we'll get to that. For now, let's take a look at the pass-through harness. This is an important step in the process as this is how the SOCD PCB is going to get power. It's got three ends, one will take the place of a connection on the wrap ends PCB, another will connect to the connection being removed from the PCB, and then the final one will connect to the SOCD itself. The connector to be removed from the wrap end PCB is this one here. As you can see, this is not unlike the 5 pin connector you'd find on a lever. However, it can be damaged if you use too much force, so wiggle it loose slowly and gently by the plug, not the wires. Pulling on the wires can cause a pin to back out in the worst case scenario, so be careful and take your time. Once it's free, the identical connector on the pass through harness will take its place. Seat that connector gently, yet firmly, into the PCB of the wrap end, like so. After you've done that, connect the loose wrap end PCB connection to the other connector of the pass-through harness, making sure that both ends are seated firmly within each other. It's probably best to go ahead and tuck this part of the harness into the crevice into the side of the PCB, just so that it has somewhere secure to rest. I'll show you what to do with the remaining connector next. Let's take a look at the FASOCD PCB. This is the heart of the party and arguably what makes a hitbox a real hitbox. This prevents both unwanted and illegal directional inputs and is required equipment for tournament play. As you can see, it has a 5 pin connector like most standard Japanese levers. 
We are going to connect the Rappin's loose 5 pin lever harness to the SOCD PCB, so go ahead and do that. You will want to connect it with the tongue of the harness connector on top, not on bottom. Seat the connection gently, yet firmly. After doing so, take the remaining pass-through connection and plug it into the 2-pin connector slot of the SOCD PCB. This is connected with the black wire oriented above the red wire and once again can only be connected as shown. Having done that, it's time to connect the remaining wires from the SOCD hitbox harness. This may seem a bit daunting, but it's actually very easy. Please follow along as I show you what goes where. First, take the red wire and push it firmly into the terminal marked D. To make sure that it's properly seated, give it a gentle tug. You will want to do this with all the SOCD hitbox harness wires. Next, you will want to connect the orange wire to the terminal marked U. Push it firmly into the terminal and then give it a tug afterward to make sure that it's installed properly. The next wire you will be installing is the yellow one and will be inserted into terminal L. Just as before, push it in firmly and then tug to make sure that it's secure. The final signal wire will be the green one, going into terminal R. Firm push, then tug to check the connection. Last but not least, and arguably the most important, is your ground connection, the black wire. This goes into the G terminal that is immediately below the R terminal. The process is the same. Push firmly, then tug to do a check. The easiest way to secure the SOCD PCB to prevent it from shorting is to use adhesive PCB feet. These can be seated into the through holes of the PCB to make your mounting experience hassle free. I highly recommend these as there aren't too many places to mount the SOCD PCB in the wrap in. Simply remove the adhesive backing on the feet, then push them into the through holes. I've chosen to mount my SOCD PCB vertically, right behind the cord door and just above the control panel, where it won't be touching metal on top or bottom. If you want to do some last minute wire tucking, this is a great opportunity to do so as we have now finished the install, and this is effectively almost the end of the build. I know that this has been a bit of a longer one, but I assure you that if you follow this to a T, your hitbox conversion will be hassle-free. Soon you'll be able to enjoy the payoff and satisfaction of your hard work. Go ahead and put the bottom plate of the wrap in back in place. Once that's done, reinstall all eight Phillips screws that keep the bottom plate secure. The moment you've been waiting for has arrived. Completion. Congratulations on finishing your new Hori Wrap-In hitbox conversion. It's been a bit of a long road, but hopefully I helped make it a painless one. We've been looking forward to getting these in the hands of customers for some time now, so I look forward to seeing your finished builds on social media. For now, stay safe and enjoy playing on your new hitbox. We'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching.